Chaps, you've got Peter. Some of you old timers might remember Peter from, I was going to say, the 3rd of May 2022, a year ago, well, well over a year ago. Um, Peter, I've, I've always had a lot of time for you, your pays and everything you stand for. Because you are living with Alzheimer's, I still don't like the word dementia, but I guess you can't really use one without the other, can you? No, I suppose not. But I always think dementia is a bit of a, I don't know, it's it's a bit of a hard stiff word and a bit of a nasty word somehow alzheimer's just seems to be a little bit warmer in in my mind anyway but yeah no i, I, I yeah i i think it's the more comfortable term yes yeah, yeah. I, I would say so but you know even with a lot, lot of me um i'm high functioning borderline personality disorder I kind of use it as a superpower these days. I kind of, I kind of enjoy that. But the one thing, what every now and then, rarely, thankfully, I've got a good therapist. The one thing, what does it does it's flat me around the ass every now and again is the depression. Yeah. And you know, and you know what? Every now and again, I was going to look at your page. Oh, what, what, what's Peter up to? Is like, oh, there he is, he's cycling up to Sudbury and all this kind of stuff. And you, you, I think I like you because you're one of the very few people where you don't just preach, you do. You're always cycling, you're doing stuff, and you're very, very vocal. That actually, if you, if you, if you don't, kind of game over, isn't it? it so you, you actively. So I'm being dramatic. So I don't mean how that sounds, but you, you just do it. So how, how's life since third of May two thousand and twenty two? Yeah, I think. Um, I think to be honest with you, it's it's not been too bad. Um, I think um, my memory is getting worse as the condition. Uh, progresses but at the end of the day it's it, it's not about the problem itself it's about how do we find solutions to to cope with that problem um and we me and devs do a lot of talks so in, in in as my memory has changed so have the way that we've done the talks we've mm -hmm. we've changed the format um and also i think that because my condition changes so does what I help other people understand change. So in actual fact, what is relevant now with me that's going on is relevant to people in, in some stage of, of their condition. Um, whereas five years ago, what was relevant then was relevant to them at that time. So in one way, I'm a bit fortunate because the book that I have with my journey is just continuously being written there seems to be more pages added to it. So as dementia takes something away from me, I tend to add something else. And I look at it a little bit as this sort of game is, you know, who can take the most out of, out of each other, really. So um, dementia takes from me, I'm going to take from it. And um, that's that's the way how I try and look at it. So, so is, is that like me with, with with the BPD with like the borderline personality stuff? Is is with with me? I use the ultra focus. Where once I've bitten onto something, I will not let go until I finish that that job or that task. So I actually I actually use where other people would fall fall on the backside. Yeah, I use it. I use, I have to. I use that to my advantage. Yeah. Is that kind of like with, with you? Like okay, actually suddenly. Yeah. I, I think it is. I think it's just the way that our personalities work. We can do one of two things. You can either give up and, and sit on the side of the road and, and just look at the scenery, or you can move forward and look at other scenery. You can just keep moving forward. I, I come up with these ideas about I'm going to do this as a challenge, to challenge myself, to challenge my condition. And we might tweak the ideas a little bit, but at the end of the day, the basic idea is there. And a year later, it gets done. It doesn't really get changed. I don't think, well, I'm going to do this. And then after about three months afterwards, I think, no, I'm not now. I'm, I'm, I'm going to chicken out. I'm just going to keep doing it because life is, life is for living. And we are responsible for ourselves in a, in a certain way. Um, medical science can do so much. But I strongly believe at the end of the day, how we live our lives is not so much up to others, it's up to us. It's it's our story, it's, it's our life, and we are responsible. The buck stops at us. People can give you medication for your condition, but they can't really tell you how to live it. Only you can do that, and only I can do it with, with my condition. And I think that living the best we can 
means that we keep going. I can't stop this condition, but maybe with the right attitude, I can slow it down. That's the thing that, and I just think that keeping the bit from here downwards healthy must keep the bit from here upwards healthy. Just my lay terms, really. No, I think it's good. So, so it's basically, is it, it's one thing what we say with men quite, quite, quite a lot. So you've got to bear in mind, we're speaking to men. Most of our audience are, are, are men. And I've taken a bit of flack for it, but I stand, I stand by it and I won't back down. Is actually with mental health conditions, even as I'm, even as I'm, as I, I guess, well, well, it is, isn't it? You can either, you, you have to make that decision to either live with it or suffer from. Yeah, exactly. And, exactly that. and us and men, it, we're the worst people, really, to to be told how to do anything. We are, we are really bullheaded, most of us. We just don't get it, do we? <laughs> No, no, we, we we don't. I think that, that that's why we've got the, the the sad statistics, isn't it? Really, but th this is why we massively promote is you, you've got to get you've we've got no time for grumbling and moaning. Yeah, we we can we can have our our, our down days. Don't get me wrong, I've, I live with depression. It, it happens, but say for example with me, like I can feel at the moment, I'm just starting to get a little bit a little bit that a little bit bur burnt out. I'm just like okay, I'm I'm doing too much. So I've I've decided to book the Peak District next week, me and my tent. Yeah. Um and just go like like, like three, four, five days or whatever else. I think there's gonna be snow there as well. So I'm really looking forward to it because I love I love proper winter camping. Um my wife think it's my wife thinks it's just to be oh the, the the butch bloke and all this kind of stuff is surviving in minus fourteen or whatever it will be up there. Actually, it's nothing. It's nothing. Well, there is a little bit of that. But it's nothing actually to do with that. It's because I, I, I force myself to be cut off from society. Yes. Yes. And actually, go walking for twenty odd miles, thirty miles, forty miles, and, and just just switch off. It's somehow a different challenge to the challenges that you have every day now. Um, pitching a tent, living in the cold, walking, it just somehow is, is a different thing and it, it recalibrates your mind. Um, everybody needs, needs a compass to give us a direction. My compass is cycling. That's what gives me the new direction. Some people is hill walking, some people gardening, some people swimming. We all have to have this, this compass that, that resets us to where we should be and not where we have become, if, if if that makes sense. And I think, you know, I, I'm i not anybody special. I have bad days. I have days where the dementia can become very overwhelming. You think of, of the future and all of that. But I very often think on days like that, okay, we're having a bad day. We've got to have them because that's the nature of what it is. It, it happens. But... What happens after the bad day? We're a day closer to a better day. And that's that's how I look at it. I don't look at it, this is bad and gloomy. No, this is part of the journey. And tomorrow, yes, it might be as bad, but then it might be 10 times better. And the problem is that when you're in that bad place, you look at everything, the worst case scenario. And I like to focus it as like one of these weather apps on our phones. Everybody says, oh, look, the weather app says 50% rain today. Nobody yeah. looks at their weather app and say, oh, look, 50% dry today. That's what we got to do. we got to look at those apps and say 50% dry. So, you know, when we have a bad day, we've got 50% of a good day coming next time. That's, that's, that's it. That's it. That's a very, 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 very valid point. There's a nice little snippet we'll be cutting out of these videos and you wins in for years. <laughs> so, so thank, thank you very much for, for, for that. So, so what, about, what about you, Deb? I know you wasn't in there. I know you're probably dying inside right now. I'm, get, I'm actually getting used to it. That, well, okay. that taking from his condition, I've taken from it too. I, I know I've grown as a person. I've become more confident, not just about having a purpose in my own life, and having a better understanding but I'm, i don't mind talking to people now and we quite often stand up in front of people and i want that microphone <laughs> so <laughs> that's what peter's given to me so i'm fine i'm, I'm busy because yeah. the more we do the more peter peter is in demand and so yeah. it, kind of, it just snowballs but i'm, I'm fine thank you that's all good because I, I remember a year ago when i was like do you want to be in the video because obviously i wasn't sure where peter would be at. Like, uh, 
do you want to be in a video? You're like, no, 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 absolutely not. And then no. here, here you are. So, but it, it get, but I think it goes back to that thing of I, I think as a society, I think we 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 people are sh- struggling to realise what they're actually capable of. So with me, like do it, like I know, I know you you do your Sudbury runs and then you penny farthing and all this kind of stuff. I know you you tag along as well, Deb. But with me, with like the racing motorbikes or going wild camping, I think we're we're losing that ability to to push ourselves. And I'm, like with you, Deb, a, a year ago, I don't think you you wasn't talking in front of people a year ago, or eighteen months ago, was you? You would just prompt. I wouldn't talk. But now I, I would say a year ago it was ninety percent Peter and ten percent me. Now it's ninety probably. 80%, 70% Peter and the rest of me. So it, there has been a change and that's fine. Um, and there's been a change in my cycling too, thanks to Peter. I, I, I now cycle fixed wheel. So no free wheel, no gears. That, that's his doing. So yeah. that's another thing I've taken from, from Peter, um, which is why I ache so much all the time. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I would say we're doing fine. I know Peter has bad days and I know he also is a great showman and tries not to let other people know. But I do know, hmm. uh, because I know him so much better now. But I think we yeah. make, we've been called the more common wise of the dementia world. I think we make a good a good act, don't we? I think so, yeah. yeah. And yeah. It, it's quite good, really, because I'm, I'm, I'm lucky. Deb does so I sort of like plug in and say it. She remembers everything that, that, that I forget during the times that we're doing these talks. Um, if you ask me now where we have spoken, I can probably come up with a few places a few years ago when I was first diagnosed. But apart from that, I've got no idea where we've been. I know I've done cycling challenges. But I don't really know anything much about them. I'm, I'm just I'm just here. And, and that's it. I'm here talking to you whose name is Dan because it's written down here. So yeah. apart from that, I just forget everything. And yes, it's it's... It's not good. It's it's it it's a, a crap deal. But the other flip of the coin is it's not quite so bad for me. I do tend to live quite well with it. And I've come to realize that every condition is a flip of a coin, and every coin has two sides. So it's it, it, it is just looking at both sides of it and what can we achieve. And I love pushing myself to the limit. Where is yeah. Where exactly is it? Last year it was there. This year could it be over there? You know, and the following year, where can we keep going? Until you see, I, I'll I'll give you a fine example. I'm cycling up a big hill on my penny farming, all right, a local hill on the way back from Framlingham to Saxmundham. And I start at the bottom of this hill and I think to myself, one day, Peter, you aren't going to be able to cycle up this hill. But today is not that day. So let's do it. And I go up the hill. So I know that one day things will change and I can't go up that hill on my penny farthing, but it's not today. And tomorrow when I go up it, I shall think the same thing. And I shall keep thinking it until I can't get up it. (laughs) You sound like one of those people where if you can't get up that one, you'll find another one you can get up. Yeah, well, in actual fact, I'll stop and I'll just, you know, walk up. A little a little story here. Years ago, we had a friend of ours who did a lot of firewood uh, firewood trade. And he used to fill his tractor up with five gallons of diesel. So he'd stand on the, the tire of the tractor and he'd fill it up. And he told my father one day, he said, you know what, Mr. Berry? He said, when I can't lift this five gallon drum, he said, I'm going to retire. Father said, right. Anyway, we went round there some years later, and he was 73. Thought you were going to retire, no. No, he said, I ain't going to retire. Father said, you told me that when you couldn't lift that five-gallon drum of fuel, you'd retire. Yeah, I know. He said, I half fill it now. <laughs> Brilliant. Exactly that. It's, it's that whole living with, isn't it? Mind has changed. So, And that's, yes. that's what we've got to do, change with things, evolve with stuff. Uh, absolutely so so is there anything more other i guess it's hard for you because because you meet so many new people but i was going to say is there anything what other people can do to help someone with alzheimer's or dementia i, I don't know say for example my example i'll probably go wrong so i apologize i had a quick i had a quick watch of the the video earlier on just to remind myself because i've done so many videos i was i started to lose things so i was like oh where's the flat cap 
So, so I went running around, the, the, the wife's not very well in bed, and also sees me like moving the mattress about, where's that hat? I know it's somewhere. So I was like, I'll, I'll pop it on just to see if I've a jogging memory. Turns out he don't remember anyway, so it's a thing. But is, is there anything what like people can do to help someone with? There's loads of things. Yeah, we do. We we do a lot of this actually in our in our talks and um the way i try to describe it to people is that uh, my memory is really a pencil drawing with no color in it so we need people to fill the colors in so for argument's sake if we meet somebody in in the street and i i don't know who they are I, i'm not sure who they are then drop their name into the conversation oh hi hi charlie how are you Ah, then all of a sudden they know it's Charlie and ask Charlie questions about what he's been doing. At, you know, oh, I'm still working in the supermarket. This is Charlie who's working in the supermarket. He hasn't had time to cycle because he's been so busy. You know, so we need people to fill that color in for us. Now, it's not difficult mm -hmm. because we do that with, we'll say, grandchildren all the while. We enter grandchildren's worlds. When a, a grandchild comes to stay with somebody, he wants to draw a picture. You don't draw a picture of Brunel's Breach in Bristol. No, you draw a stick mummy and stick daddy and for hours, you enter their world. So people with dementia, I cannot remember. So we can't, we can't backtrack into your world. You have to come through that curtain and enter ours. So little prompts, little conversations, talking out loud, filling the gaps for us, it's always a very easy thing to do. Dementia is very complicated, but around that is this ring of simplicity. Use the simplicity bit to your advantage and the person with dementia's advantage, and it makes the complicated bit a lot less complicated. So Debs doesn't say, why can't you remember this person? She just keeps throwing the names in. I mean, one of the things here, she's wrote your name on here. Um, she actually wrote Dan Man Up to begin with, and I thought to myself, well, I've got to say Dan Man Up, that ain't going to say anyone, but then it's full. <laughs> so, so little prompts, little things just help. And the, the very practical thing, and, and this is Peter's idea, sometimes when he comes from his place into South London, he doesn't always know that he's meeting me or where he's meeting me, so we've made a series of little cards he can put onto his bike handlebar saying, um, meet Deb Waitrose, meet Deb Tesco's, just so you know what you're doing, yeah. and I know you're going. You're going to arrive, and I don't have to hunt you down. It's not difficult. It just means you don't you don't cycle without knowing where you're going. You know exactly where you're going, and you know you're meeting me. So all you've got to do, really, as as somebody on the outside in, is just think of that person as their world being a pencil drawing, and you, as an individual, have to fill in as much colour for them, so that a it's easier for you. And the person with dementia doesn't get frustrated. And also it's easier for the person with dementia because we're not out of the loop. Isolation for people with dementia is a very, very, very scary place. It is for anybody. But the mm -hmm. problem with people like me is that if I go down to our local pub, um, people can say, how are you? Yes, I'm fine. I don't know what the weather was yesterday. I, I, I probably won't remember what it is this morning, this evening. I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. I don't know what I've done yesterday. I don't know nothing about politics. I don't know nothing what's going on in the world. So I can't talk about anything that's relevant. I can only talk about years ago. When you've covered mm -hmm. that with people who know you, it's then, hello, how are you? They don't know what to say anymore, so they drift away, and you become somebody who's not really spoken too much when you're out because nobody knows what to say. But in actual fact, if you know somebody with dementia, you can spend hours talking to them about absolutely nothing. Just stuff that's that's funny. Just silly things. And like, instead of saying, talking about how the weather was, just say, oh, the weather was shit yesterday, you know? Bring a prompt in, colour it. And we can then have a conversation and we can still, I mean, I'm with Debs quite a bit um, during the day some days. And I don't think we ever run out of, of rubbish. We before. do talk a lot of rubbish, though, don't we? <laughs> but but it's precious rubbish. But it's, it's important <laughs> rubbish for somebody like me. It, 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 it's actually the key that winds my clock up, if, if, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, it's, it, it, I just find it fascinating. It, it uh, is. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah 
So, so there, if, I don't mean to say, how, how do you, I don't mean to how I don't mean to I'm just interested. I don't mean any offense. How do you, how do you, how do you not get, how do you not get frustrated if you have to keep repeating yourself? Um, because you know, I, I hope I didn't mean that offense. I'm just so intrigued. So really, yeah. that question, it, it can be frustrating. Peter's not doing it on purpose, and if yeah. it's frustrating for me, it must be a thousand times more frustrating for Peter not to know what's happened. So actually, I stand in his shoes a little bit and think, what would I want? Um, and and the, the, the positive side of it, and we are hot on the positives, is when something good has happened, I can tell Peter 50 times and I get the same reaction. And I love I love his reaction um, because it's like he's heard it for the first time. So there's a benefit as well as a negative. And I think you just have to have the positive hat or the good side of the coin, as you would say. Yes, yeah. I remember my father later on in life when he had um, Alzheimer's, he used to ring me sometimes uh, 25, 30 times an evening, um, constantly. I would have the phone beside me and he would ring me every time. Peter, what have you been up to? He said, I haven't seen you for a long while. And I'd say, well, actually, I've been with you today, Father. Have you? What a fool I am, he said. And we would have a little bit of a joke and laugh about it. The phone would go down. Literally two minutes later, Peter, are you all right? Yes, Father, I'm fine. And we would go through a very similar thing. Not once did I ever switch my phone off um, and some other people around him did or wouldn't answer the phone. I answered that phone every time he rang and every time he used to apologise. I always remember that. And somehow it somehow worked. I could have just not done it. And I, I, I admit that when he went into a care home, there was some degree of relief that a, I missed father's calls, but B, I was glad he didn't call every two minutes, you know. Yeah. Uh, I understand the frustration, but I was trying to enter his world because it wasn't his fault. And I used to think to myself, that poor man is sitting there wondering if I'm okay and rings me and doesn't know that he's rung me 10 minutes ago, five minutes ago, two minutes ago even. You know, and I used to think, poor old father. So I'd have a chat and a laugh with him. And somehow that just sort of worked. What else could I do? But I think the other thing is, even though I may hear some of your anecdotes more than once, and, and they are funny anecdotes, I'll give you that. But depending where I'm at in the day or my mood, I might perceive them differently. I might might get different things from them. So it doesn't really matter they're repeated because they're doing something rich and fresh about them. And I think that's important too. And it's also important, we'll just throw this in right quickly, my wife suffers with the condition. I don't because she sees everything that that I do wrong. She remembers what what I forget and, and she sees all of that. Debs is a good friend, but she's not actually walking hand in hand with this condition. She's a little bit mm. weak. And my wife has a dementia monster. That's me. And she needs to get away from her monster. So I think in the world of dementia, People who are directly connected with us, we we need a family friend or somebody to take that person away a little bit. Somebody who is connected but disconnected. Somebody to take the load. And then when I go home, I think my wife can accept the challenges that are going to come for the next 24 hours a little better. She's a little bit rejuvenated. She's a little bit yeah. gone away from it. And I think that's an important thing that we have to do. You can't cope with this on your own. It's it, it, it's impossible. Joy, I absolutely applaud you actually because I, I remember there's been a couple of videos where, where I've said, because obviously we tend to talk about somebody's mental health condition, problem, whatever. Um, but, but I've said in videos sort of, sort of, when sometimes, yeah, yeah, you need to help that person, but actually we can't ignore the people around them. Because Alzheimer's mental health, even 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 cancers, other, any other stuff is actually we, we've got we do have a habit of focusing on the sick person. I use that term loosely, and we forget about everybody else. So, so I guess so I guess your wife uses Deb to take you for walkies and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, and, and <laughs> cakes as well, which is good. But you know, I often find that that everybody asks my wife how I am, but nobody asks her how she is. Nobody yeah. says, oh, hi, Teresa, Peter, okay, yes, and how are you? Nobody ever says that. They always say, how's Peter? And she says, well, you know, he's okay, memories, this and that, and so on. So, okay, fine, and then they go. 
the, the focus is directly on what they perceive to be the big problem. But dementia is like all of these conditions. It's a bit of a pebble that you're holding above the water. You get diagnosed, that pebble hits the water and the ripples go out. The pebble stays where it is, i.e. me, but the ripples are the ones that go out to all the friends and family and everybody else. And, and they're the ones who feel the ripples more than I do. I, I, I've just sunk into where I am. I'm happy. That's fine. I'm the pebble under the water, which is no different to the pebble above the water. Just I'm wet. That's all. But everybody else has got the ripples and the ripples become bigger and they become a problem for people. So, yeah. mm. No, so I'm, I'm so glad you said that actually because it's like uh, very few people do and it, it it does frustrate me sometimes it does frustrate me sometimes so so well well done on uh, well done to you so so just before what is the time oh, we've flown through this bloody hell so so have you got you got another book out have you got another book out or am i making that up no you're not we um, we've got a poetry book out poems or kind of just picking up on how Peter talks and um I've got time just to explain quickly how that came about. Have we got no, time? go ahead. No, no, go on. So, um, sort of over the last couple of years, Peter, every now and again, would send me a text message in the evening, which isn't as weird as it sounds, with um, his thoughts and feelings about living with dementia. And they were very, well, you can tell from the way he uses language, they were very rich and full of metaphor, uh, and very directly about his emotional experience of living with the condition. So I, was, I jotted them down, and uh, after about 18 months, I thought, I've got enough here to put into a book. They're too good to lose. So we put them into a book called Walk With Me, Musings Through the Dementia Fog. It's illustrated by some photos of various bits of Suffolk, and there's a little bit at the beginning when I've written kind of what's happened in the last year or so. And um, I, it was on Amazon, and actually, because I'm quite obsessive, I was checking Amazon's ratings last night, and we hit number 57. 57 in that poetry section. Oh, now, Amazon ebbs and flows, you know, yeah. 157 by the time I speak now. But it means somebody somewhere is buying the book. And that, and it's Peter. It's Peter in those pages and his thoughts. And and you have no recollection of writing these. And every yeah. time I ask Peter to read one out, when we're at a talk, he goes, well, that's good shit, isn't it? In a practical <laughs> way. Um, and they are. Do you, I mean, I don't know if you want to hear one. Have you got one you want yeah, to hear? Uh, yeah, do you want to read one now? We're, we're, we've never had poetry on Man Up, so you can be the first. Well, this is called, um, and I really don't remember this. Um, this is, I suppose this is how I was feeling at the time. What's it like being inside me? In the eye of the dementia storm, this one is called. I stand in the eye of my dementia storm, trying to focus on the thoughts that circle around me. Faster and faster they twist. As I reach out and grab them, they turn to dust and are gone. And yet I stand in the eye of the dementia storm, safe and calm and happy as always. So there you go. Wow. <laughs> so so yeah. they, they, are, they are as they were sent to me on the phone. The only thing I've done is put a little bit of punctuation in and maybe corrected the spelling, but they are Peter's words, uh, un unadulterated. And some lovely photos of Suffolk. Yeah, there's lots of, um, lots of photos of... Uh, I suppose, I, I don't know if you can really see that very clearly, but that's uh, sort of like... Not a, really, but yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a it's sort of like landscapes, uh, trees by the looks of it, and, and foreshores and, and, and that sort of thing. And they're kind of meant to represent how your emotions are. Yeah, yeah. And it's it, it, it's sometimes difficult to, to, to explain to people what it's like. And I think I found that as, as a way of... I suppose summing it up, condensing it into a few words that somebody could then think, yeah, yeah, I sort of get it now. So when they yeah. when they have to um, or, or when they're with somebody with dementia, maybe they can just tailor the way that they are to make everybody's life a little bit better, you know. No, I think I think that's a really valid point. I I do all the tagging, linky stuff anyway because I I just think it, I mean, it's just absolutely you 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 you're a fascinating chap. You, you you really are and ever since i discovered you what a, a year ago i can't remember i think it's radio suffolk or something like that right we got an email from them saying um can they give out my number and we we, we talked yeah that was bbc that was bbc yeah. suffolk then wasn't it yeah, yeah absolutely or georgie jameson one of the two yeah uh, 
that, that 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 was it, yeah. But I've followed you ever since, ever 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 since, and it's just you, you you've made my life a little bit happier. Of just oh, what space is that up to now? And, and and so so well done to well done to. So just before we draw to a close, and there's that little cue of let's call it a, a day at a minute. If, if some if somebody's if somebody's watching it, not necessarily with dementia, let's just let's just say if they're just sitting here watching this whenever it goes uploaded, let's just say they're just feeling shit. What what would you? They don't want to get out of that. What would you give them some? Give them some wisdom, Peter. You are not a grey box, or if you are a grey box on that particular day, inside you are very colourful. Be open. Let the colour come out. Show people really what you are, and don't be that grey box in the corner. Just open up a little bit and and be colourful. There is another day tomorrow. And in the grand scheme of things, we're only on this planet for a very, very short time. Let's make it worthwhile. My father said to me once, he said, well, he was a very wise man. He said, you know what? He said, they say you only live once, Peter. He said, that's a load of rubbish. He said, you only die once. You live every day. And I take those words with me. And I, when I'm feeling bad, I think of that sort of thing. And I think, you know what, Father? You're right. Let's, let's live it. So there we go. Brilliant video. Fully enjoyed it. Let, let me hit that record. Let me hit that record button. Whatever it is. Where are we? Do, do.